Let me bring to the show Daniel Grams, the president of Grams Capital Management. Dan, thank you so much for rejoining us. Well, it's great to be here with you. Great to have you on the show, Dan. Uh, so I just want to kick off very quickly with a retail sales month on month. Um, as we were talking uh, right ahead of going on air, right ahead of going on air, um, very strong data, 1.9 versus 0.7% of expectations. So what is this data suggesting for the US economy? Well, I think it's a little logical in the regard that our economy has opened up a little more. And so we're seeing that positive number growing. Uh, so I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, it adds a little fuel to the market. Uh, I think as a result of that, I do look for some positive movement today. So I, I think it's a good sign for us uh, of hopefully of more to come. The issue though really is can we maintain it? If depending on what happens with the second round of the possibly second round of the virus, uh, that may determine whether or not we're going to see stronger retail sales going forward. People still have to buy things. So it's always going to be maintaining uh, a certain level. It's just the issue, is it going to grow now? And if it does, that's a positive step. Uh, so, um, what do you what do you expect from the, today's trading session, the final one for for the week? We do see a major jump of the futures. By the way, just a few hours ago, they were uh, lower. In in this case, we have the Dow up by four tenths of one percent, S and P five hundred four tenths of one percent, and the Nasdaq uh, seven tenths more than seven tenths of one percent higher. So, what do you expect from the, today's trading session, and um, which are uh, the market movers at this point? Well, I'm looking for the stock indices to all of them to be stronger, including the Russell. Um, I, your description of what has happened so far in our trading sessions right on target. Uh, Asia held its own so far. Europe is holding its own. I do look for follow through to the upside. Now, here's where the challenge comes in for us. Is the buying, if we see this, is the buying that we're seeing coming into the market if it continues, is it sellers this week buying to take profits before the weekend? Or have we gotten cheap enough yesterday for buyers to come back into the market? Today's action won't give us that answer. I do look for positive closes. What's going to be important is the early part of next week. If buyers are here, we should see their footprints on Monday. If we don't, if we fail to make new highs or the market starts to struggle, then I would look for a sideways mode. You know, the market's very sensitive here. Uh, this is a critical phase for it. And going into the election the next few weeks for the stock indices is actually very important. Uh, yeah, definitely. I just wanted to share with our viewers a little bit of um, stocks to watch. First of all, of course, uh, Pfizer. Let me show you very quickly Pfizer, um, the Pfizer's chart because it's uh, trading pretty well in uh, pre-market up by more than uh, 10 percent. Pfizer chairman and CEO Albert Gorilla said the vaccine candidate under development by the two drug makers could be uh, ready for an emergency use authorization application by late November. Of course, I'm talking about Pfizer and BioNTech. Um, so far, we do have a great performance of the sector. Pfizer 2.22% uh, higher in pre-market. Anyway, let's talk about politics. I just want to bring you the latest when it comes to uh, President Trump and Joe Biden, Democratic uh, presidential candidate Joe Biden on uh, Thursday criticized what he called President Donald Trump's a panic response to the coronavirus pandemic while Trump defended his handling of a crisis that has killed more than 216,000 Americans. The rivals spoke in simultaneous town halls uh, broadcast on separate television networks after a debate originally scheduled for uh, Thursday was called off following Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis. Uh, Biden, speaking to voters in Philadelphia on ABC, blamed the Republican president for concealing the deadlines of the virus. He said he didn't tell anybody because he was afraid Americans would panic. Americans don't panic, he panicked. Trump defended both uh, his response to the pandemic as well as his 
on personal conduct, including staging a Rose Garden event at the White House where a uh, few wore uh, masks uh, or practiced social distancing, uh, which resulted in numerous attendees uh, contracting the disease. So how are you preparing, um, Dan? I wonder, because according to the polls, I'm talking about a Wall Street Journal and NBC polls, uh, Biden leads Trump uh, by more or less 11 percentage points, which is um, a strong lead so far, specifically in a few of the battleground states. Uh, so how are you guys preparing? Because um, the possibility of a new president is definitely going to change a lot in the U.S., specifically corporate America. If we want to talk about taxes, if we want to talk about a Green New Deal, if we want to talk about um, the Supreme Court, uh, all those topics are, let's say, completely different story if we, uh, if we would have a new president. Or better, let me tell it better, if you would have a new president. Well, you're right it would definitely be a, a paradigm shift for our country uh, if uh, Biden is elected president. Uh, and are people going to rally around Trump uh, that we haven't seen their footprints? Are his supporters in some ways remaining silent? You know, and, and that's, the, I think, part of what he's counting on. Whether that's there, nobody really knows the answer. But it's the final filters that we want to be sensitive to. It's it what it's this. Most people, if you look at presidential cycle theory, most people focus on the year of the election that they expect the president would want to have positive numbers. Well, since I think it's 1980. Uh, Almost every year, I think, no, sorry, since 1948, every presidential year has been positive except four, if I'm not mistaken. It's not necessarily a good barometer, but research has been done that shows it's not the year of the presidential election, it's the three months leading up to the election. If those are positive, then typically the, the seating president, the incumbent president, gets reelected. If those three months are negative, then the seating president typically loses. Uh, that's been true since 1948, except three times, 1956, 1968, and there you had the Vietnam War issues, and in 1980, and that one was the Iran hostage situation. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind when it comes to the presidency. Again, starting in 1948, uh, the Truman to Eisenhower administration, the United States, for whatever reason, we have a tendency to switch parties every two administrations. So if you look at all the president we've had since 1948, uh, you'll have Eisenhower had two administrations, then it was switched, and, and so on. To each president, uh, they don't last more than two. One exception, Carter. Carter only had one four-year term. The other exception was Reagan. Reagan had two terms, and George Bush Sr. had one term. Uh, and then the market was down for three months, and then we switched to Carter. And the three months leading up to the Carter election uh, did not go well for him. It was negative growth, and then we switched to a new president. So it's, a, it's an interesting environment that we're in right now. That means the next three weeks are going to be very important. So watch the S&P uh, over the next three weeks. So, you know, I'm so happy you brought, uh, you brought up this uh, topic because what we saw in the past three months is a, a major swings. I mean, a lot of ups and downs. So uh, at this point, what is the market suggesting? A possible re-election or a new president? Because September was not the best month for Wall Street. No, it wasn't. But, and that's a good point that you're raising. If you look at a monthly chart, though, right now we've seen September up, 
we've seen October up sure. uh, part of it. You know, so the issue is, can we make new highs? What you'd be looking for is that this month uh, is that we close near the highs uh, or uh, uh, beyond the highs of September. That's what you'd want to see. If it does, that would favor Trump statistically based upon this observation. If it doesn't, then it favors a change in administration. And that will be a big change. Yeah, definitely. Are you ready for this change? Well, I, it's going to be interesting to see what does happen. Uh, there has been some things that the Trump administration has done for our economy that have, I think, been helpful. So, for example, the, the tax changes that he did. Uh, and people say you shouldn't give corporations tax changes. You know, don't give them tax benefits. The Biden administration wants to raise those taxes. But w the problem with that is then it becomes an economical decision for many companies. If my taxes are too high here, then I have to make a decision on my bottom line. If I move my business to another country and I get favorable, more favorable tax treatment, it's my responsibility to get the best return for my shareholders. Therefore, moving my business to offshore, which is what we've seen uh, over the last 20, 30 years, uh, makes economic sense for that company. So I, it, there's a fine line here with uh, tax benefits and what it means to our economy and to the people that are looking for jobs in this country. You, you, so, know, you know, I totally understand your point, like totally and 100%, uh, because y you know, the topic about taxes is very simple. Um, no company wants a higher taxes, that's for sure. And then there might be a major jump from 21% to 28%. So I do figure out this, but what about a debt? Uh, we saw the IMF uh, debt ratio uh, yesterday, the data, it was a little bit worrying uh, because even, of course, if you are from Italy, it's not worrying at all because in Italy, everyone is used up to a, a very, very high debt to GDP ratio, but uh, we can't say the same for the US. So aren't you preoccupied? I mean, who is going to pay the debt and how exactly is this going to happen? Because Trump is definitely a president who doesn't care about debt level. Well, one, if you look at his business that he's in, debt is a part of the real estate business. So if you're in real estate, there's two characteristics. And I've owned real estate in the past, uh, commercial real estate. And what you look at uh, is when it comes to paying taxes, your taxes go down, but you get a lot of benefits by owning real estate. Second thing is carrying debt uh, in that type of business is not uncomfortable. It's a part of the business. It's what you expect to look at. If you're going to do that, then you look at the ratio of that debt to the assets that this person owns. And oftentimes, you, you'll see a, a debt that may seem large, but if you c compare it to their assets, it's not a significant number. And, and in Trump's bit, uh, situation, we're not really sure what the numbers are, actually. So I think that part of when you say he doesn't seem to be too concerned about it, it's the nature of the business that he's coming from. Uh, and as far as paying it back, you bring up very good points. I, I don't think we've really seen in any program to do that yet. And when the, it, when the country was staying strong, like we saw at the beginning of the year, uh, to maintain that momentum, then you can start gen generating excess revenues to reconsider debt in terms of how you're going to handle it. Right now, we're not in a position to do it. And what, what does bother me, Alex, is that we're not taking steps to do something. We're not getting the stimulus program in place. I really felt we should have another $3 trillion, uh, put into our economy. 
Uh, I'm so disappointed that we're playing this political game. And right now, I don't see anything happening until after the election. I mean, if you're if you're the Democrats, it's to your benefit, in a sense, to delay that stimulus package. One, you might be able to make it larger. And politically, it may be to your benefit. But what concerns me are the people right now who are having trouble paying their bills, who were taken care of before. And now we're going to start seeing a drag on our economy if you wait too long to launch a stimulus program. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, um, there might be very important consequences, or at least this is what Jay Powell said, um, of course, the president of the Fed. I just want to focus for a second on the treasuries because I do see right now real time um, treasury yields increase by two and a half percent. So far, the 10 year is at 0.75. So um, what what is the exact yield that might start to disturb you? Like what kind of yield? Uh, are we supposed to see so that you think, okay, something's got wrong? Well, I guess what, what I focus on are the futures and the futures trade in price. Uh, so in other words, I would look for lower prices and futures, which would be higher yields. And uh, right now, I think the market is right to do that. We also want to see that to support the stock indexes. In other words, if the stock market's going to go up, then we want to start seeing some pressure on interest rates in terms of price to go down. So I'm looking for weakness in the prices of the interest rate markets, and that would mean higher yields. I don't have a particular number in mind when it comes to yield, uh, because I am focusing more on the price for our yield curve. Uh, what about the dollar index? What kind of dynamics can we imagine over there in the medium to long term? But let's focus on the short to medium because probably this is the easier way so far. Uh, inching lower by 0.15% in the 93.63 mark. So um, what's the outlook in your opinion? I'm looking for a weaker dollar right now with the structure that we have and looking for higher prices uh, in the other currencies. So the Euro, the Swissy. Uh, Japanese yen may go sideways a little bit. Aussie dollar, I'm looking for that to firm up. But if, when you look at that currency, you got to watch China. China has said to our friends in Australia, we're not going to buy your coal. But, you know, they could buy coal from Vietnam. They're a large exporter. Uh, I don't see them going too long without buying Australian coal. Uh, the thermal coal in Australia is good for coking, which is used in steel making. And as China's demand, as their markets are now increasing a bit, we're seeing some positive numbers on the manufacturing side, which means they're going to need coal to stimulate uh, their steel for their steel industry. And you know, if you look at Australia, the, their largest trading partner is China, China, Japan, South Korea, United States, and India. Uh, so I, I look for the Australian dollar actually to get stronger. Uh, the British pound, that market, it's a tough one because it's looking positive. But we still have this Brexit issue that you and I talked about a long time ago that's still hanging out there that has not been resolved, as you know. There's still some issues that need to be taken care of. So I think the market's looking for a glimmer of hope that it could be somewhat orderly uh, when this does happen. Uh, the Canadian dollar is very similar to the Aussie dollar. It is a, a resource-based currency. And there you want to look at the, can, the uh, crude oil mark uh, to give you a, more of a feel for what's happening with that market. So in summary, totally. I'm looking for these currencies to get stronger and for the dollar index to get weaker. Uh, so, um, in one minute, uh, if we have a look at a crude oil um, of the WDI chart, um, what do you think? The best is yet to come or the worst is yet to come? Well, I don't, I think it's neutral. And the reason I say that, uh, I do not expect crude oil to get up above $45 for, well, the rest of this year, maybe the first or second quarter of next year. I think between 
$38 a barrel to $43 a barrel, it's about where this should be priced. Now, if you look at our global demand for crude oil, it's down 8%. And right now, OPEC is talking about in 2021 to back off on their production cuts. So if we still have the supply issue that you and I were talking about months ago, we have a lot of supply, we have decreasing demand. Uh, it's not a combination for this market to take off. But something else to keep in mind, if we're at $40 a barrel, between $40 and $45 a barrel, there are companies in the shale world uh, that can be profitable. Some of those right. companies can be profitable at $30 a barrel. So I think right now, crude oil is where it should be. All right, thank you very much. Daniel Gramza, President um, Gramza Capital Management, thank you so much for um, joining us. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend, Dan.